Now, if you were to try and explain what the Castanet Club was to anybody who never saw it or wasn't a part of it, it would be impossible. I always think the Castanet Club is a way of doing things. 12 people doing something different at the same time. It was a synergism. I read that on the back of a 12-inch of a 12 inch Frankie Goes to Hollywood once, where you have a whole bunch of things that on their own do something, but when you put them all together, it's a really big thing. It's like Burning Man on stage, meeting Glastonbury, meeting the Edinburgh Comedy Festival, and it's all exploding at the same time, and nobody knows what's happening, and the audience is just being fractured with bits of lightning coming off. So I'd never seen anything so funny, just so suburban, my perfect sense of humour, great observations, great songs. They're all funny, all funny people. Everyone in the band is, is still funny, when apart from Steve. So talented and so Australian and fluorescent and audiences love them. The whole venue was the personality of the group and there were all these strange creatures and I was, I was really impressed. It's wrong to think of them as a band. They were theatrical performers who could play the odd instrument. A lot of people had multi-skills. I mean, the wonderful thing about working with such great improvisers is that you would go on thinking something was going to happen. It never happened. Something amazing would happen, and that became the piece. It was like going into battle as a cabaret performer. There's somebody around the back making lamingtons, and there's somebody cutting hair, and this guy, Bowie Man's dropping coins out his ass. There's a fat guy up the back in a smelly Elvis suit that Amy didn't want to be in the bus with. There's a diva on stage singing. They had this wonderful thing that we always wanted to have in the band, which was girls. Hugely talented, smart, sassy, super cool, self-possessed women. And then we've got the horn section that's kind of going off like a big band horn section and everything is bigger than it should be. I always think we were like a punk band. We could do anything we wanted to do, but instead of being bleak, we were excessively daggy. With a lot of the music from our childhood. The material was always anchored in that familiarity of popular culture and retro nostalgia. A lot of Vegas stuff in there. Well, it was a big band. And when you've got someone up the front like Lance Norton, Glenn Butcher, Glenn's got the pipes for a big show tune. We had the club, we had the band, we had the ancillary people. It was a whole group of people that came together that couldn't have worked anywhere else. If it had been in Sydney, there would have been too many distractions and the whole thing would have broken up before it got to critical mass. Well, I can't ever remember the Castanet Club having a bad gig. No one can say that. A big part of the story is what happened after the band finished. Almost half of them were still working in showbiz, which is unheard of. It sort of set the direction for the rest of my life. I've been working in show business because of what I did in the Castanet Club. Castanets are part of Australia's creative legacy, whether Australia wants it or not. It was a joyous, wonderful, exuberant, all-inclusive, larger than the sum of its parts experience. Because the